Throughout Lamar Jackson's illustrious career, he has racked up many accolades and awards, and there are times that it seems like he is literally unstoppable on the field. But there is one thing in his career that he has never faced before last week. Even though he has had his ups and downs throughout his career, his praise and his critics, all of the regular season wins, and all of the crushing playoff defeats, Lamar Jackson has never been through this in his entire career. Now, with Lamar playing in over 90 games, including the playoffs, he has done very well for himself even though coming out of college, people thought he was not going to be what he actually is today, and that is a two-time MVP. Lamar Jackson has a 58-21 and 21 record throughout the regular season. His playoff success is a little bit different, but we're not here to discuss that. We are here to discuss this being the first time in Lamar Jackson's career going through this struggle. Even though right now, through two weeks of the season, he is the fifth leading passer in the NFL, and you can't do that if you're not a quarterback, but but along with that, to go along with his greatness, he is the 12th leading rusher throughout the league. So with all of his miraculous play on the field, no matter how much he does, even though he puts the weight of the team on his shoulders and carries them through victory after victory after victory, this is the first time throughout Lamar Jackson's professional career that he has lost three straight games. Now we take this back to last season in the AFC Championship game where Lamar Jackson lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. Then in the first game of the 2024 season, Lamar Jackson fell to the Chiefs again. And then last week with the unexpected loss to the Las Vegas Raiders, this gives Lamar three L's for three consecutive weeks. While this is unfamiliar territory for Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens have been in this unenviable position before and lose this game to the Dallas Cowboys. They will start the season 0-3, a feat that has not happened in Baltimore Ravens history since the 2015 season. And during that season, the Baltimore Ravens went 5-11 and and missed out on the playoffs entirely. Not too much went right. The starting quarterback got injured. But even before he got injured, this team really wasn't that good. So if the Baltimore Ravens do end up losing this Sunday versus the Dallas Cowboys, there is a strong possibility they're not going to make the playoffs. And there also could be a strong possibility that John Harbaugh could be coaching for his NFL life. But understandably, Steve Bashotti does not like making rash decisions. And I know that there have been a lot of questions of if we fire him during the season, who are we going to bring in? Because we don't have any assistants currently on the team that can step up and take control and lead this team to anywhere of any significance. But if the Ravens start off 0-3 and fire their head coach, what would be the expectations in the first place? So once again, this Sunday, Lamar has to put on that Superman cape and do everything in his power to not lose four straight and to not end the first time during his career and be 0-3 after the first three weeks. Now, while this is not going to be an easy task because the Dallas Cowboys are playing at home and they have been one of the better teams throughout the past five years, there was a point in time where they were scoring 40 points per game at home led the NFL in scoring, but inexplicably, they just seemed to fall short during big games. They lost games versus Buffalo, San Francisco, the Miami Dolphins, and hopefully the Ravens can go in there and pull out a victory of its own. Now, even though the Cowboys lost last week to the New Orleans Saints, I'm not going to say lost, they got pummeled by the Saints and Derek Carr, who came out looking like vintage Tom Brady. The New Orleans Saints with a suspect offensive line, hint, hint, and ran all over the Dallas Cowboys for almost 200 yards. Alvin Kamara just seemed like he could not be stopped and the Dallas defense was strictly dazed and confused. Now, the one ace in the hole that the Cowboys actually have is defensive coordinator Mike Zimmer, whose familiarity with the Baltimore Ravens runs all the way back to when he was the defensive coordinator for the Cincinnati Bengals. So he does know a little something about this team. Now, I don't know if he has the similar mindset of a Mike Tomlin where he says, listen, we just let the Ravens be the Ravens and eventually they will fold because they are extremely predictable. And this is something that we cannot be in this game because going 0-3 kills any playoff chance that the Ravens may have, especially with the Buffalo Bills next week and then the Cincinnati Bengals coming up the week following. And you have the Bengals also fighting for their playoff lives, being 0-2 at the bottom of the AFC North basement. So we need for Lamar to take his 20-1 and record versus the NFC, which is a hella good record hella good. to have versus any conference, even though that loss did come to Daniel Jones and the New York Giants. Who would have thunk it? 
but 20 and one is still a great record to have. And hopefully Lamar can go in there and make it 21 and one. It is extremely difficult for a team to play Lamar Jackson, especially if they do not see him on a regular basis. When you see a team once every four years, it is hard to prepare for that team. And hopefully the Ravens throw in some new wrinkles from what we've seen from the first two weeks. But this game is not going to be an easy task at all because the Dallas Cowboys do have Dakota Rain Prescott as their starting quarterback who was in the race for MVP last season with Lamar Jackson. And they do have CD Lamb. We thought that last week Devontae Adams was a problem. CD Lamb may be on another level. He can run all the routes and he may be an even faster version of Devontae Adams. So the Baltimore Ravens and this pass defense, which is currently ranked last in the league, needs to figure something out. I don't know if they need to bracket him or what they need to do run man on one side and zone against him i don't know but cd lamb is a game wrecker he challenged tyree hill last season for the league leading yards and he can score from anywhere on the field now before the season started we all thought that this baltimore ravens defense was going to be a no fly zone but it has not happened up until this point and when the ravens drafted nate wiggins we thought that we were taking something strong and making it even stronger but this didn't happen now granted zach Orr is in his first season as the defensive coordinator and he's going through some bumps and some bruises but hopefully he is learning on the job and stopping cd lamb is going to be priority number one <laughs> because he technically is the only offensive weapon that Dallas has to contend with. Now, Brandon Cooks, he's a decent one, but for some reason, he and Dak don't have that chemistry together. Outside of that, Dallas does not have a competent number three wide receiver that they can count on. And hopefully, this is not the week that they find out who he is. Now, when it comes to the run game, they don't have Yes, they brought back Ezekiel Elliott, but the ground game is non-existent, so that makes this team extremely one-dimensional. And this may be the game that the Baltimore Ravens pass rushers eat and eat heavily. But we cannot discount Mike McCarthy as an offensive coordinator. He has won a Super Bowl, and he has schemed up some of the best offensive units in this league. So the Ravens need to find out whatever they need to do to get this done. And I personally, if the Ravens are up by 10 points in the fourth quarter, I will not feel safe because Dallas is at home and they can be downright scary at times. It's just for some reason, the first two weeks of this season, they look decent versus Cleveland, terrible versus the Saints, but you never know when they are going to have that breakout game or they're going to find their groove. So stopping the run is gonna be extremely paramount for the Ravens if they want to escape this game with a victory. Dallas has some injuries on defense, but they do have all world linebacker, Micah Parsons. We thought that last week, Max Crosby was gonna be an issue. Micah Parsons could be that times 10. Once he gets rolling, it is hard to stop him. Now, Dexter Lawrence hasn't been the Dexter Lawrence of late, but you never know when he can come in for a breakout game. The one positive may be that their all pro cornerback who just came back from injury in Trayvon Diggs is on the injury list and he may not play, let's hope because the Ravens need all the advantages that they can get in this game. Now, offensively, the Ravens need to run the ball and stick with the run. And like I said, New Orleans ran for almost 200 yards of them last week. Now, granted, Derrick Henry is not Alvin Kamara, but if we give him enough touches, get the volume going late in the game, as we saw last week, Derrick Henry can get rolling. It's just that the offensive coordinator and the head coach have to stick with this philosophy. Stick with who you are, stick with what you know, stick with what wins you games. Now with the passing game, Zay Flowers may not be Rashid Shaheed, but he is darn good in his own right. So whatever matchup that the Ravens have with Zay, they need to take advantage of this because we know that the Ravens have an issue when a player has an outstanding week one week, for some reason they phase him out the game the very next. We saw that in week one with Isaiah Likely and then last week he pretty much was non-existent. So they have to make a concerted effort to get Zay Flowers the ball and not with all this gimmicky stuff like leave the gimmicks alone. Let him go out there, line up and do his thing. The Ravens also need for Rashad Bateman to find some consistency with Lamar Jackson and look in the lost and found bin and find his hands. Don't know if he lost them. Don't know if he just put them away for a while, but he needs to get those back because that costly interception last week turned the tide in the game. And we cannot afford to give the ball back to this offense. So the Baltimore Ravens game plan is clear. Stop the run, contain CD, run the ball, 
and hit Zay Flowers with some plays every now and again. And this is, of course, easier said than done with this offensive line. We don't know what we're going to get from week to week, being that three out of the five players just aren't experienced and they really aren't that good. So will the Dallas Cowboys be able to take advantage of the youth on the offensive line or will it be a repeat of the same thing that we saw last week? And a lot of this is contingent upon the Baltimore Ravens coaching staff. And I'm talking to you, John Harbaugh, because if we're going to climb out of this 0-2 hole and make something of this season, we need you to step up. We need you to take accountability. We need you to do a lot better than what you are doing. And Zach Orr, listen, I understand it is on the job training for you right now, but you have a defense that was number one in scoring last season. Yes, we did lose a few pieces, but the defense shouldn't look this bad. The passing defense damn sure shouldn't look like this. But you get grace because Mike McDonald in his first season had some of the same struggles and the next season turned everything around. The only problem is we're not worried about next season. We are worried about right now. We're worried about winning a championship now because you do not know what next year is exactly going to bring. And if the Ravens continue on the trajectory that they are on right now and continue losing these games, the one thing that I do know for sure is that John Harbaugh may be looking for a new home. Nah, man, I'm cool.